I've got 100% cotton duck, medium weight, I think. If I remember right, it's 10 ounces. I'll put it in there if I gave you the wrong amount. On a really long piece of toilet paper cardboard. So, let's make a canvas today. I had some, well, I had a 11 by 14 canvas that I had bought at Hobby Lobby. And the canvas stretched, as it does to many of us. And I was going to try and restretch the canvas but the staples were, I guess they were using a pneumatic stapler or something because I couldn't get the staples out without ripping the canvas. So I had to remove the canvas. So I thought it was the perfect opportunity to start making my own. So let's get into it. Here I am, I'm rolling out the canvas and in a second, there will be a little announcement. I think the most fun part about this fabric is that you can just do a little snip and then rip. So the supplies that I will have in this building process, I have on the screen right now, 100% cotton duck canvas. It is seven ounces. I did double check. It is the unprimed canvas. I wanted to try unprimed canvas and I know it's a lot more work, but oh well, I had to go through it, not you. I originally cut everything at 11 by 14 and then I have to go back and do it again, but you don't have to watch that again. These are the stretcher bars I'm using. They are 16 by 20. They were a value pack canvas that I had previously taken apart. I got some wood glue, a staple gun, canvas pliers, and mallet, a rubber mallet. You'll see that there are two different sides to the stretcher bars. One side has a bevel to it, the other is flat. The bevel side will be the side that will be the front of your canvas. The other side is where you will staple everything. I just reinforce the corners with a staple because I wasn't really sure how sturdy these frames would be for a heavier fabric. I'm pretty sure the fabric that I used was heavier than what came with it. Because again, value canvas. Keyword, value. It is a nicer word for cheap. The value canvas I will be comparing is 11 by 14 and then I also will be comparing a artist collection canvas from Hobby Lobby and it's just the next step up in price. I went ahead and moved to a different table for the space because that small desk wasn't quite big enough for a 16 by 20 since I totally thought that it was going to be 11 by 14. I went ahead and stapled one side of it and then did the other side with the canvas pliers and stretched it till you get that little V that you saw on when I first stretched it. it is just letting you know that it is about stretched beyond its max you have to find a balance you got to stretch it just enough to where it's taut but still springy 
you don't want it to be so tight that you try and paint on it and it rips. And I'm fiddling around with the corners and decided that even though I should know how to do this, I just going to move on and figure it out last and I'm going to go ahead and staple the other sides and you will see me take out a couple of staples because I'm going to pull I'm going to flip it around look at it you see there's little creases in it so I'm going to pull out a couple of staples and restretch it sometimes you just got to do that this is my first time doing this I've never stretched a canvas before never made my own did not know you could make your own until I saw a video I think it was Valerie Lynn her YouTube videos I love watching them they're so aesthetically pleasing and I saw her build her own and it inspired me I just had to do it here's me unsuccessfully getting all the corners symmetrical I guess you could say that one corner on the left looks pretty rough but I am NOT going to be selling the painting that is made from this this is just for me for entertainment purposes and here I am marking the value canvas because it comes in a pack and I think they're all individually wrapped I can't remember and it didn't really say what it was so I wanted there to be a little sticker on there to let everybody know what it is and yes I dripped paint on it it happens I'm an artist and not a very organized one at that So in my comparison with these three canvases, the value canvas is just what it says. It's a value canvas, it's not necessarily made for selling. You can sell them as art pieces if you're starting out. It's just they don't last quite as long. The artist collection one is the next one up. And I would say that both canvases are pretty good for beginners. However, I think the value canvas is great for when you are just afraid to ruin canvases. They come in at a dollar eighty-six a piece. I think it was twelve ninety-nine per pack of seven of them. So you get them at a very cheap price, and so I feel like it's a lot easier to just mess one up and not feel so much regret about it as compared to maybe the artist collection canvas it's still not quite as expensive as you would expect it to be $8.99 is pretty good and I usually wait for a sale to come on so I still get them probably about half that price when a sale hits the biggest difference between the value canvas and the artist collection is the back. You can see that the artist collection canvas has reinforced stretcher bars in there. It's got an extra layer that keeps it more stable and sturdy, whereas the value canvas only has the usual stretcher bars on the back of them and they're fairly thin for what they are. And whoops dropped it oh almost did it again and this is the one I made it's it feels close to the same as the artist collection canvas minus the fact that it has those stretcher bars from a value canvas this is the price breakdown as you can see the 50 by 60 canvas cost is a lot better than the 11 by 14 there is over 50 percent savings in building one at home as compared to buying one in the store so i have some grumbacher acrylic gesso sorry had to do it and i tinted it with some acrylic paint i was trying to go for burnt sienna it looks a lot more like burnt sienna 
in real life than it does in the video. It kind of looks like a... I don't even know what I would call that color. Maybe a raw umber or something? I'm not really sure. Or maybe a raw sienna. That's a little lighter. And then in between layers, I take a dinner break. I'm starving. And then back at it again for the second layer. I think that I would say the pros and cons of building your own is I would say the pros would be it's make it yourself so it's more personable you feel like you have been with your painting from day one from the design to making the canvas to priming the canvas you've done it all and it's it gives you a lot of gratification knowing that you came all that way to make such a special painting for yourself and if you're making big ones, I would say it is cost effective. But at the same time, I would say the cons would be when you're getting smaller canvases, the cost is a little higher. I wouldn't say that it's that much higher, it's just a couple dollars, but it is higher and it's extremely time consuming, especially if you get unprimed canvas like I did. I don't regret that. And I actually thought it was kind of therapeutic but it does take a lot more time. And I would also say that buying in bulk is the best way and some people can't afford that upfront cost of several hundred dollars to buy in bulk. But if you are serious about it, I would definitely consider it. And in the next video, you will see me filming the process of painting a painting on that canvas. Hope you enjoyed this last little clip of my baby Ruby, my little tailless wonder. I hope to see y'all again next week. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend, and I will see you next week. Bye!